Hello students, let's do speed, distance and time, exercise 12b. Page number 142, question 6. A motorcycle covers a distance of 72 kilometers at a speed of 36 kilometers per hour and a distance of 135 kilometers at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour. Find the average speed of the motorcycle. So we're talking about the same motorcycle. It's going at a certain speed for 72 kilometers. And again, another distance it's covered at a different speed. Now we have to find an average speed. That means one value or one number which comes in between 36 kilometers per hour and 45 kilometers per hour. This will give us the average speed of the motorcycle. So let's begin distance d1 i have written d1 because here we are talking about one distance here and then again another distance so first let's consider this as d1 distance 1 is 72 kilometers at time speed 1 is 36 kilometers per hour now if we have to find speed what is the formula to find speed speed is distance divided by time isn't it so to find the speed we need to have distance and time now, what are all the values that we have here? We have speed, we have distance, but we don't have time. That means first we need to find the time. So let's find time. So time 1. What is the formula to find time? Time is distance by speed. So distance here is 36 km, 72 kilometers, 72 kilometers. And speed is 36 kilometers per hour. So we have to divide these two and then we will get the time. So let's divide 72 and 36. As you know, 36 ones are 36 and 36 twos are 72. So now what do we have left? Kilometers also cancel. We just have hours, two hours. So time we have found is two hours. This is T1. Now we need to find T2 also. Only then can we find this average speed. So let's do that. So here we have distance 2, which is already given to us as 135 kilometers in the question. Speed is also given to us in the question. Now we have to find time t2. So here also time to find time is distance by speed. And distance here is 135 kilometers. And speed is 45 kilometers per hour. Per hour. Now we can divide. 135 by 45 or we can cancel it here itself so 45 ones are 45 and 45 threes 45 into 3 is 125 so now we have three hours so time here is three hours now we can find the average speed what is the formula to find average speed that will be total distance by the total time we have to divide now total distance is d1 plus d2 and total time is t1 plus t2 so let's do that what is d1 distance here is 72 kilometers so that is 72 plus how much is d2 135 now what is t1 t1 we found is 2 hours so that we can write as 2 plus t2 we found as 3 so 2 plus 3 so now let's add up these two 72 plus 135 that will be 207 and in the denominator we have 2 plus 3 which is 5 now we have to divide 207 by 5 so let's do that division so let's do it here you can do it in your working column where you have space so here 5 4s are 20 minus 7 5 ones are 5 now my remainder is not 0 so I'm going to continue my division by putting a point here, I'm going to carry that point up and put a 0. Bring that 0 down. Now my number is 20. So 5 into 4 is 20. So what do I get? 41.4. So here this is 41.4 that I get after dividing. Now what have I found? I have found the average speed. So what is the average speed? 41.4. Now you have to put your units distance by time so kilometer per hour so this is our final answer 41.4 kilometer per hour
Question 7. Speed of car P is 120 km per hour and speed of car Q is 75 km per hour. So we have two cars P and Q and the speed is given. Now listen very carefully to these questions. If both are moving in opposite directions, okay, so car P is moving in one direction and car Q is moving in the opposite direction, what is their relative speed? Now what do we mean when we say relative speed? When there are two moving bodies like this, the speed of one body when compared to the speed of the other body is what is called the relative speed. We are talking about the speed of one body in relation to the speed of the other body. Now what happens if they are moving in the same, in the opposite direction and what is their relative speed when they are moving in the same direction? Now this is relative speed so let's talk about this now. Relative speed. Now if the two bodies are moving in opposite directions then the relative speed will be the sum of the speeds. Okay. So if they are in opposite direction you add up the two speeds. If they are in the same direction difference of the speeds you subtract the speeds. So let me say that again. If you want to find the relative speed of two bodies that are moving in opposite directions add up the speed of the two bodies. If you want to find the relative speed of two bodies moving in the same direction minus the speeds of the two bodies. Okay. So question one is they are moving in opposite directions. That means we have to find the sum of the two speeds. So speed of car P is given to us. Speed of car Q is given to us. Now relative speed when they are moving in opposite direction is speed of P plus speed of Q. So what is the speed of P? 120 kilometers per hour and the speed of Q is 75 kilometers per hour. Just have to add up these two. So when you add up 120 and 75 you get 195 kilometers per hour. So this is the relative speed when they are moving in opposite directions. Now next question is what is the relative speed when they are moving in the same direction and look at this point, same direction, what should we do? We should find the difference of the speeds. That means we should subtract the two speeds. So relative speed when moving in the same direction, speed of P minus speed of Q. So here speed of P is already given to us 120 kilometers per hour minus speed of Q which is 75 kilometers per hour. Now when you subtract these two, you get 45 kilometers per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. So now we have found the answer of the relative speed when they are moving in opposite direction is 195 kilometers per hour and when they are moving in the same direction it is 45 kilometers per hour. Question 8, a train 900 meter long crosses a pole in 45 seconds. Find its speed in kilometers per hour. So here we have, remember when you're finding speed, you need to have speed is equal to distance by time. You need to have distance, you need to have time. Now do we have distance here? We only know the length of a train and we know the time. So we do, what is the distance then? So here we are talking about trains. So moving trains this is what you need to keep in mind when it has to cross a pole so here it's saying it's crossing a pole when it crosses a pole remember a pole is stationary it will stand still or a stationary person that means a person who's simply standing if a train has to cross a pole or a person who's standing then the distance covered by the train is equal to the length of the train okay so understand this to cross a pole we need to, if you have to find the distance, it's simply the length of the train. So here for speed, we need the distance, but distance is not given, but the length of the train is given to us. And that is the distance because it's crossing a pole. Okay, so let me tell you that again. To find speed, you need distance by time. Time is given to us as 45 seconds. Now distance is not given to us, but the length of the train is given. And the length of the train is the same as the distance because when a moving train crosses a pole, the distance is equal to the length of the train. Okay, so now let's write what's given. Distance covered by the train is 900 meters. It's actually the length of the train. But that 
can be taken as distance covered by the train. Then we also have the time that is 45 seconds. So here we have meter and seconds. That means first when we find the speed, it's going to be in meter per second. So let's find the speed in meter per second. Meter per second speed will be distance by time and distance is 900 meters and time is 45 seconds. So we have to just divide 900 by 45. So let's do that. Let's divide 900 by 45. 45 twos are 90 minus 0. Okay, so that's 20 there. So now we, a speed in meter per second is 20 meters per second. Now the question says, find its speed in kilometers per hour. That means we need to convert this meter per second to kilometers per hour. So speed in kilometers per hour, this is a simple way of doing it. I hope you've not forgotten it. When you convert 20 meter per second to kilometers per hour, you just have to multiply by 18 by 5. So keep this number, this fraction in mind, 18 by 5. So let's do that multiplication. So 20 into 18 by 5. Cancel. 5 ones are 5, 5 fours are 20. Now 4 into 18. 18 fours are 72. Now this has now become kilometers per hour. So we have found our answer in kilometers per hour, which is 72 kilometers per hour. Question 9. Find the length of the train moving at a speed of 90 kilometers per hour if it passes a standing man in 8 seconds. So here we've been given speed, we've been given time and we've been told that it's passing, the train is passing a standing man, a stationary man. He's not moving, he's standing still. Now here we are asked to find the length of the train. So here speed is given, time is given, distance is not given. So what do we know about a moving train passing a standing man? When a moving train passes a stationary person, then the distance covered by the train is the length of the train. So here we've been asked to find the length of the train means we've been actually asked to find the distance covered by the train. So if we find the distance covered by the train, we will know the length of the train. So let's write what's given to us. We have speed, 90 kilometers per hour. Time taken is 8 seconds. So here, as you can see, this is kilometers per hour and this is 8 seconds. So this let's convert to meter per second. Now 90 kilometers to convert it to meter per second, what do we do? We say 90 kilometers per hour to convert it to meter per second, we multiply by 5 by 18. Simple multiplication. Now we cancel 18 into 5. Okay. And then here 5 fives are 25. That means this is 25 meters per second. So now we have speed in meters per second. Time taken in seconds. Now we can find the distance. So distance of the train is the same thing as length of the train. So the distance covered is the length of the train. That is what we know about a moving train passing a stationary person. So here to find the distance, what do we say? Speed into time. And speed is, now we've got 25 meter per second and time is 8 seconds. So here we just have to multiply 25 into 8. 25 into 8 is 200. And since we are talking about distance, it's meters. So 200 meters. Now what is 200 meters? It is the length of the train. It's the same as distance covered. The length and the distance covered are the same when the train passes a standing man. So the length of the train is 200 meters. So this is our answer. Question 10. A 100 meter long train passes a 200 meter long platform in 20 seconds. Find the speed of the train. Again, we have to find the speed. That means we need to know speed is equal to distance by time. To find speed, we need to have distance and we need to have time. Now time we have 20 seconds. Now what about distance? Distance is not given, but they have given us the length of the train and the length of the platform. So when a moving train is passing a platform, keep this important point in mind. 
when it's crossing a platform or a bridge or something like that, the distance, we need the distance, isn't it? What is the distance? It's the length of the train plus the length of the platform. In this case, it's platform. So remember to find speed, we need distance. Distance is not there, but we have the length of the train and length of the platform. So when you add up these two, length of the train and the length of the platform, you will get the distance covered by the train. So let's write distance covered by the train is length of the train and it's already given to us in the question length of the train is 100 meters long. The train is 100 meters long plus the length of the platform is 200 meters. So what is the distance 100 plus 200 is 300 meters. So now we've got the distance and we also have the time. The time taken is 20 seconds. It's already given to us in the question. Now we can find the speed. Now first here, we have to find the speed in meter per second. We can leave it at that because they have not asked us for anything else. So now speed is distance by time. And what is the distance? We just found out 300 meters. And what is the time? 20 seconds. So now we can cancel the zeros. I can cancel. I can cancel 30 and 2. 2 ones are 2. 2 into 15 is 30. So now that's it. What else is left? We just have to write this 15 meter per second. So we have found the answer. The answer is 15 meters per second. Now if you have to convert this meter per second into kilometers per hour, you know what to do. Take 15 meters per second. Multiply it by this fraction 18 by 5 which makes it very easy. So keep this fraction in mind 18 by 5. Now you can cancel 5 ones are 5, 5 threes are 15 and multiply these two. 18 into 3 is 54. So now it's become 54 kilometer per hour. So if you want your answer in meter per second, you can leave it there. If you want your answer in kilometers per hour, this is your answer. We will stop with this now for, for now children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you children.